Hi, Chef Shane Keith here, and today I'm going to take you through the process of making a really straightforward Cajun roux. But before we start, I want to talk about the most important thing. You can see I have long sleeves here on my chef's jacket. Long sleeves are really important when you make Cajun roux because there is a possibility of some splatting, and Cajun roux is really hot. All right, let's get going here. The second most important thing in making a Cajun roux, I believe, is to have a basin of cool water to help you cool down the roux when the process is over. Now, I've put about a half inch of water here. I need to ensure that there's not too much water because if the water splashes in the roux, which I'm going to make here, if the water splashes in the roux, you're in for a whole lot of pain. So I'm going to put my pan in and make sure it only comes up, a, I don't know, half inch, a quarter inch. I don't want any splash over. So that's an important process. Okay, without further ado, let's get going here. So I've got my main, main tools here, which is a frying pan and a whisk. Those are the only two tools you need. And I'm going to start with my heat at about three quarters, pretty hot. The Cajun roux is made with clarified butter, except you guys, I live in Boulder. And in Boulder, we just are really healthy. We're the name of the healthiest, skinniest city in America. So I'm going to use an um, avocado oil. Um, no, I will not get the same flavor as if I were using a uh, clarified butter, but it's a whole lot more healthy. So I put about a half a cup of oil in there. Now I'm going to put in some white flour. Do not be tempted to get bolder on me and use a whole wheat flour, because if you use a whole wheat flour, it's, it makes speckles. Notice I haven't really given you a recipe, because it's really a visual here. And I'm, I put a little flour in the oil. I've got my burner on, about three quarters, and I'm using a whisk. You must use a whisk absolutely, if you use a spoon, you will burn your roux. Okay, now I've stirred it up, um, it's still a little thin, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little more flour. I want it to be like a soft oatmeal, not too thick, not too thin. Let's see if we can do this here. All right, this is getting a little better. I'm going to lift it off so you can see without all the, the sizzling. So the roux here, it's a little thin. I don't know if that's oatmeal, but um, that's kind of the consistency we want. And it's not what they call nappe. I'm going to add a little more flour here, guys. Turn down my pan. Okay, that's the last break I get. Now I'm going to keep stirring it. All right, so. Cajun roux has to be stirred every single second that you're cooking it. And I like to make a little pattern. I go around and around, and then I come back around the outside. Around and around, back around the outside. Round and around, back out the outside, and so forth and so forth. If you stop for one moment with your Cajun roux, it will burn. It's sort of shocking. Now, I must say, at the beginning of the Cajun roux pre preparation, you have a little more leeway. Um, as far as burning goes, but once it starts to brown, it is shocking how fast the roux will burn. I'm going to try to bring this past the color of an almond into the color of a dark walnut. And um, it's uh, a fairly fast process, so let me remind you a couple things we've gone through already. We started with long sleeves. Secondly, we had a catch basin with water. Now, I know if I put a plastic basin there, I might just melt the bottom off in this process. So I took my paella pan and used that. Not that everyone has a paella pan, but uh, if you have a, a paella pan, that's good. Then I put in my oil. The best oil, in fact, would be a clarified butter. Here's a secret trick. Ghee, that's G-H-E-E, -E, which is an Indian clarified butter, is in fact perfect clarified butter. You can buy it at an Indian market, Whole Foods, King Supers. Ghee is optimal. Of course, you know, if you're trying to live a lower bad cholesterol, you're trying to keep your butter under control. So I, in fact, use an avocado oil here. Now, you could use canola oil, of course. Canola oil has some advantages. In what has one advantage, price. Canola, there is no canola plant, by the way. People think canola oil, oh, it's a canola plant. No, canola. Canola oil stands for Canadian oil low acid. Interesting, huh? So you can see um, the oil doesn't make so much a difference, but the stirring makes all the difference. So 
here it is, if you can see it, it's kind of the color of an almond. I'm going to keep stirring it here. Now at this stage, when it gets almond, you turn down your heat. Because it's really, things happen quickly here. Notice I haven't stopped stirring yet. Um, notice my long sleeves. There's my catch, catch basin ready to go. Um, now I'm noticing as I stir that the front by the handle seems to be cooking a little hotter here. I'm not happy about that. Next thing, as you prepare your roux, it will change consistency. It will go from thin, or maybe cream of wheat or thin oatmeal, to thinner, then it will thicken up. And that's where I am right now. And I am really careful about splatting with my whisk. Somehow if you use a spoon, it just doesn't quite work. You can actually start to see I'm a light color walnut here. I'm going to take it one more step. Now you guys, if this is your first time roux, I would urge you to make it that color. Ooh, I stopped for a second. Stop at that point. Now I'm feeling frisky and I've got a little experience here to say the least. And I'm going to take it a couple seconds further. Never stop stirring it or it's not good. Well, I'm about ready, you guys. So I'm going to really carefully put it in my cooling basin. Now, if you're all stressed about that, why don't you just take it off the burner and cool it by continuously stirring. But as a chef, I'm in a heap of a hurry, so I'm going to keep stirring it carefully. Hear that sizzle? That was great. No, I'm not stopping stirring. I'm just going to keep on stirring. There it is. It's cooling it off here. It's a fairly dangerous process, so if you want, you can stop a little early and just stir it until it cools. What does that mean? That means you could actually just move it to the side or turn off your heat. And here is what your finished roux looks like. It's a really beautiful, oh my gosh, that is. Someone in Louisiana got this right, ladies and gentlemen. So again, Chef Shane Keith here, and that is how to make your Cajun roux. I am done. Turn it off. I forgot perhaps the very most important thing about making Cajun roux is do not dip your finger in the roux. It looks really delicious, but it's coming in at five, six hundred degrees. One dip in the roux to taste it, and I am assuring you, you will be in the emergency room with third degree burns. So be kind to your driver and to your finger. Don't dip your finger in the roux.